Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you a recent reads video. It has been a week since I last checked in for a recent reads video and I completed four books this past week and DNF'd a further book. Um, four is not a huge number for me but I have been reading through some bigger books as we've discussed previously and when I DNF'd my the book that I did that was near the end of the week and it meant that I didn't have time to like start anything else and like get it done this week. So I only finished four things, but I'm still pretty happy with that. So let's jump straight in and talk about all of the things that I've been reading. So the first book that I completed this past week was Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. I listened to this on audio. It was narrated by Chloe Cannon. So this is a middle grade contemporary story that follows the main character Ivy Aberdeen and at the start of the novel there is a hurricane it's not a hurricane though a tornado one of those type of natural disasters I think it's a tornado in the area where they live and their house is destroyed in this tornado so her, Ivy and her family have become displaced. There's her, her parents, she's got an older sister, and then she also has um, twin baby brothers who are like babies. Um, and so there's a lot going on with their family, and now they've been displaced because their house has been torn down by this tornado. Um, they don't have a lot of belongings. Um, so it's kind of about that. And then also um, Ivy discovering or like learning about herself and her sexuality trying to figure out that maybe that she likes girls and dealing with that um quite a lot as well so it's very much like kind of a coming of age story or like finding yourself story it was really cute really sweet I thought it had some really like nice messages in there um definitely a book that I would be happy to give like my niece or someone like that to read because they had some really nice messages in there um you know really great stuff about family and friendships I really liked the way like parts of the way that it ended I thought it was really well done by the author and I really am um, enjoyed it and I ended up giving that four stars I then listened on audio to The Boy Who Followed His Father Into Auschwitz by Jeremy Dronfield. Um, so I listened to this on audio. It's narrated by John Sackville. This was the third book that I have was reading in November for Nonfiction November. So this is a um, biography of a father and son and their time during World War II. Um, the son... The father is Gustav, and now for the life of me, I cannot remember the son's name. Anyway, the son was only a teenager, kind of at the start of the um, war when they were in Austria. And basically, they both ended up being in several different situations together, um, but always tried to stick together to the point where the son um, got his name put on a transport list to Auschwitz so that he could go um with his father and so that they could like stick together um so it does have like a great kind of like message about the bond between um father and son um it did also have a few things in there right at the beginning um about that I found a little bit interesting about because they were so there was also a mother of course and a uh younger brother um and the younger brother was able to um be um taken to um america um when he was young he had, they were able to get him to america where he was adopted by another family um and then there was an older sister who they managed to get to england to work as a maid in england so she managed to get out kind of right at the beginning of the war but even the part about her and like the part where she was trying to get to england well they were trying to get her to england and they were having to like how hard it was to like get your visa and all of that or whatever it was approved whatever it was back then and that the family were banding together to get her there that it would take weeks in line to get these this paperwork approved that the whole family was on like this 24-hour roster of like keeping her place in line so that she could get this like approved um and then there was also another sister and so you have the older sister that managed to get to england the youngest son that managed to get to um the united states and then the father and son from the story who 
ended up in Auschwitz, but did survive Auschwitz, both of them. Um, but then there was a, the mother and another sister who, um, went to, I think it was Minsk and were never heard of again, who ultimately probably died in the war, um, in some form of concentration or slave camp of some kind. Um, I didn't love this which I always struggle more to express that I don't enjoy books that are non-fiction. And I think that's, especially when it's such like a harrowing true life story, which this is, I just don't think that the story was told with much emotion. I didn't connect to this very much at all. I felt like I was a step back from the story. I struggled to concentrate on it at times, which again, may be down to me. Um, I just didn't feel a connection to this story, which given the harrowing nature of it, I, I feel like I should have. Um, but I did still, there were parts of it that I found interesting. Um, I just don't, I just, it felt like it was written from a really kind of removed perspective and it isn't written by um, a family member. It is written by a nonfiction author who did a lot of research into this family and does did a lot of interviews with the son who made it to the United States, Kurt, I believe his name was. Um, so yeah, I just, I, if I felt like I was really removed from the story. In the end, I gave that three stars. Uh, I then finally finished Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass. So this is one of the reasons why I didn't get through a lot of books this past week because I had started this on Friday last week. So I was reading this during, for my currently reading last week. Um, and then I didn't finish this until the Wednesday. So it took me like five or six days, well, five days, I guess, to get through this because this is just under a thousand pages. Um, so I did finally finish it. This is the final book, of course, in the Throne of Glass series. So I finally finished the series, which is great. I enjoyed this. I, at this stage, like when you've read through this whole series, unless you hate reading it, which I wasn't, I, you really connected to these characters. I didn't think there was anything overly shocking or anything that happened in here. Um, there was some like good, like emotional beats though that we hit. I do think that this is maybe a little bit, lo well, probably a lot longer than it needed to be. I don't think there's any reason for a, a YA book to be a thousand pages long. Um, what she could have cut out, I don't know, but I think that there are probably areas where this could have been kind of slimmed down. Um, but for the most part, I did really enjoy this. It's not my favorite in the series. This is my friend Emma's favorite in the series. I think my favorite, well, I know my favorite is Empire of Storms. And then I, well, and then Queen of Shadows, I think I liked more than this one as well. But I did still really love this. I gave this four stars. Really happy to have finished this um, series finally. Really enjoyed it overall. Um, it was just enjoyable. I love following along with characters and really getting involved with them. Um, and so I'm glad to finally have this done. And like I said, I gave that four stars. I then read The Good Friend by Joe Baldwin. This is one of my NetGalley arcs. So I did receive a digital copy of this in exchange for an honest review. This is a thriller. It's basically about a character um, whose name is escaping me, Jenny. It's about a girl named Jenny, a woman named Jenny, who when she was like in her teens, she was living in the UK um, and she had her best friend and like, you know, that she had this great friendship with and she had a boyfriend named Tom and they, you know, were this little friendship unit and then her father, um... Is she's really heavily involved in swimming, like competitive swimming, and her dad really pushes her on that. And basically her dad ends up taking her, I think when she's like 16, oh no, I think she's like 18, around that age, ends up taking her from the UK to Australia to focus more heavily on the competitive nature of her swimming. Um, and she's now an adult and she has like won gold medals at Olympics and stuff in swimming. And she's trying to kind of move away from that. And she decides to take a few weeks and go on holidays to France where France, France, I don't know why I said it like that. I'm Australian. France, um, where she, where her childhood friend is now living, now married to her ex-boyfriend, Tom. And so she goes to visit them and stay with them to kind of try to find herself. And the synopsis all has this whole thing about like, you know, but maybe her friend isn't exactly what she remembers. And there's all like sinister vibes to it and everything. This is not a thriller. 
it is marketed as a thriller, I guess. It's like tagged as a thriller. All of those types of things. I just don't think this is a thriller. There is nothing thrillery or mystery or suspenseful even to this plot. It's more a kind of a dark drama with friendship themes, which again, you would think would be up my alley because I do love friendship themes, particularly toxic friendship themes, which you get a lot of in this book. But I didn't love this. I really didn't. Like I say partly probably because I was let down because I went into this expecting a kind of suspenseful story and there's nothing really suspenseful. The main character drove me up the wall. Her friend is clearly unbalanced and not in a way where the main character could really help her or anything like that and puts her in really uncomfortable positions repeatedly and it just drove me crazy that the main character just kept staying there I was like just leave there is no reason for you to hang around it was just driving me up the wall then when you get to the end of the story which I'm not going to spoil of course but the very part at the end I have never rolled my eyes so hard it was just so incredibly ridiculous uh that it just drove me so crazy that I was like really like really um so definitely not my favorite book I ended up giving that two stars so that's the last book that I completed during the week, but I then did DNF a book like I mentioned. So I DNF'd actually my fourth read for nonfiction November, which was Say Nothing, a true story. I cannot talk today. A true story of murder and memory, is it? Yeah, of murder and memory in Northern Ireland by Patrick Radden Keefe. So like I said, so I was listening to this on audio. It's narrated by Matthew Blaney. I will say that the audiobook is really good. Like I really liked the narrator, Matthew um, Blaney. He has a really nice Irish accent that was very pleasant to listen to. So this is another one where I feel like it suffers a little bit from mismarketing because the way that the book is described in the synopsis, it's set up that it's a true crime story about a woman who was in Northern Ireland, who Jean, who had 10 children she was a single mother of 10 children and she was dragged out of her, ho her home by masked assailants um, and was found sometime later, like her body was found on a beach. And it's kind of, it, it does set out that it's about the conflict in Northern Ireland, but that it's kind of supposed to be like the story of that conflict, but framed through this crime and it's not really that you get well i so i dnf this just under 50 percent of the way through and it is a longer book so i read well over 200 pages or listened to well over 200 pages of this you get very little about the murder i will say this has incredibly strong reviews on goodreads it's got a lot of four and five star reviews and i agree that if you are going in looking for a story that's about um the northern island like conflict or the troubles as i think it was is known as this would be an excellent book for you to pick up because that is what this book is about it's a lot about the those conflicts the main players the big events kind of that happened in that um, but it's not what I went into this expecting to read. And I knew that it was going to be partially about that, but I expected it to be more about the murder of this single mother rather than about the conflict itself. I expected it to be about the crime and then why the cr crime didn't go, why the cr crime went un, um, uninvestigated, I guess you would say, um, because of what was going on with the conflict. And I thought that was going to be more of the side part with the crime being the main story. And it's very much the other way around, like very much. It's like 90% the conflict and 10% the murder, if that, uh, at least over the portion that I've read, that I did read. And it wasn't even terrible, but it was another one where, and I think this is again on me, I seem to be having trouble over this past week of concentrating properly on the audiobooks I just wasn't able to engage in the non-fiction stories that I was reading the way that I wanted to be able to um and so I was listening to it on th on Thursday and I'd got about like 45 percent of the way through or something like that um and I was like okay 
I'm struggling to, you know, follow this story, this narrative, but, you know, I'll finish, had finished listening to it for the day while I was at work. There's a tale. Um, but I was like, I'll come back to work tomorrow and try again and like see how I go. And I listened to it like not very much. I listened to a further like 30 minutes of it the next day and was just like, I just can't do this. I can't concentrate on the story. Um, I think because I was finding it a little bit dull, if I'm being honest. Um, but I think if I was in the right mindset, had gone into it wanting to find out like a lot more information about the Northern Ireland conflict, then I would have it would have been exactly what I wanted so if you are interested in a story about that aspect of history which to be fair is not a area of history that I know a lot about definitely check this book out like I say I was this is not a book that I've DNF being like it was terrible and if I'd read it I probably still would have gotten like at least probably a three-star rating it's not one of those books that I was like actively hating I just wasn't able to concentrate on it and enjoy it enough for me to put the time into finishing it on that day I just really needed to listen to something easy and lighthearted. So I ended up DNFing it and instead listening to like three uh, episodes of a, the Buffy slash Angel podcast that I listened to. So I did that instead, which is definitely what I more needed in that moment. So that's it. That's everything I've like read slash DNF'd. In order to talk about what I am currently reading, that was not a great start to a sentence. I literally, guys, I don't even know what's wrong with me. I can't talk today. Uh, in terms of what I am currently reading, I'm currently reading The Impossible Knife of Memory by Laurie Hulse Anderson. Um, this is a library book and is one of the books that I need to read for one of my goals this year. Um, this is a YA story that deals a lot with um, PTSD. Um, the main character's father um, is a someone who served... Um, in the military in Iraq and has very severe PTSD as a result of that and he is, he is her like only uh, parental figure um, and so it very much affects her life and that's basically what it's about. I am currently on page 174 so I'm like basically halfway through. I would love to get this finished today because today is I'm filming this on the 30th of November so it is the final day of November so I would love to get this finished so I could um include this in my November wrap up but we'll see because it was my mom's birthday during the week so we're going out to dinner tonight for my mom's birthday. I will say that I'm definitely in the Christmassy spirit. This is unrelated but I just thought you know slightly like can talk about like what's going on in the week and the upcoming week. Um, I'm definitely in the Christmassy spirit today at my local shopping center where I go every Saturday morning to have coffee with my parents and my nan. Um, we caught the um like mini like parade that they do there each year where santa arrives at the shopping center um to like be there to like take the christmas photos you know the ones you always had in your childhood where or is that a thing in other countries i just had a thought where i'm like is that an australian thing i don't know if they do it in other countries but here in your childhood your parents would take you to a shopping center where there'd be a santa no, it is, because I've seen it in movies. It's definitely a thing they do in other countries because it's featured in movies all the time. You know, you go sit on Santa's knee, tell him what you want for Christmas, you have a cute picture taken. Um, and he was arriving at the centre um, today. So they had, like, the mini parade, and I saw him arrive, and I love Santa Claus. <laughs> I just really love Santa, and I really like when it's, like, a really good Santa. You know how sometimes you see a Santa and you're like, poor effort but this was a pretty good one um so that definitely has left me in the Christmassy spirit which is really great because it is the first of December tomorrow I am going around to my parents place tomorrow to help my mum put up their Christmas tree and I will take out my <laughs> little mini fiberglass uh tree that I have to get slightly into the Christmassy spirit so yeah anyway that is what I've read over this past week. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you have read any of these books, if you've got any thoughts, or I would love to chat with you guys about what you have been reading, or if you guys are getting into the Christmas spirit, I would love to chat in the comments down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That is all I have for this video today. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.